Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Uh, you know, one of my most successful videos, if you want to call it successful, was the one I did uh, originally uh, cautioning the preppers out there that I have seen in our testing and classes that they need to upgrade to general just for the knowledge that they'll gain by doing that. Uh, I got a lot of uh, good comments and thank yous, and, but I also got a lot of ranting and raving on the uh, comments section uh, from a lot of what I assume were preppers uh, taking uh, uh, great uh, disparaging uh, remarks to my comments. Uh, some of them weren't real nice. Uh, you know, uh, I was called uh, just about everything on that video in the comments. Some of them I had to remove because of the nature of the comment. But uh, anyway, that's part of YouTube, so I don't know what to do about it, uh, except maybe to make another video and kind of go through some questions. I'm going to pose some questions to the preppers today, and again, I am targeting the, the preppers that spent the time to learn a little bit about the radio hobby, took the test, maybe they even went to a class before they took the test, uh, took the test and passed it. And uh, as I've said before, they kind of disappear, never to be seen again. A lot of them, a lot of them, not just one or two. All right, we notice that uh, in our classes, you know, we might have 10 people in the class or 15 people. And of all those people, uh, one or two uh, show up again. So there's a whole lot of techs out there that uh, have not upgraded. Now, some of the comments were, well, there's a lot of people that, you know, that's all they want to do is just get a tech, tech license. But as a consider myself a mentor, now I've got to tell you that you are missing a big, big, big part of the hobby if you don't upgrade at least to general and uh, re and capture all those radio bands that uh, you're unable to operate in right now. You're also missing a lot if all you do is go out there and buy one of those $35 radios. I've got one sitting on the table back here, and I use it from time to time at uh, different events uh, where I need a little radio to walk around with, uh, and they're just fine for that purpose, but uh, you get beyond that, much beyond that, and they're really uh, not very useful, uh, you know, for a the broader hobby of uh, amateur radio. So <clears throat> today I'm going to give you some questions. Maybe it'll uh, prompt some of you to uh, go back and do a, just a little more studying, you know, a couple of more weeks or so, and go take your general tests and upgrade. And maybe upgrade your radio too at the same time, at least to a regular mobile radio, as I've said before, with uh, you know, 50 watts instead of uh, four or five watts like those little radios on that shelf back there have. So uh, let me put my glasses on because I can't read without them. And I'm going to go down a list of things just to uh, kind of prompt the preppers on some things they might want to learn about to be more effective in communication. So number one, do you know when we talk about radio propagation, what that means? Uh, the little HT that you're carrying around really doesn't have any radio propagation to it. It's 95% line of sight, and uh, there might be a little, little bit of propagation during what we call a tropospheric uh, propagation. There's some weather front coming through or something. 
and you happen to have a great antenna, you might be able to reach out there a ways. But normally, um, it's just simply line of sight. So do you know what radio propagation means? That's question number one. If you don't, uh, when I pose these questions, I also ask you to, if it in interests you in finding out, to go out there and kind of Google up radio propagation and see what that is. Number two, and I've said this already, do you know that your HT is simply line of sight, line of sight, and it operates at very low power, four or five watts. Uh, depending on what's around you uh, is going to determine how far you're going to reach. You know, typically the curvature of the earth comes in at four or five miles, six miles, and it's not going to go any further than that over flat ground. Uh, and remember, when you're holding that HT, uh, you're holding it about, oh, let's just say you're tall, you're holding it about six feet over the ground. So uh, when you calculate the curvature of the earth, remember the top of your antenna is about six feet off the ground. So uh, once the earth curves around, uh, you might get just a tiny bit of uh, what we call ground propagation, but it's not going to be very much. You're going to be way down in the noise, uh, hardly readable, and very shortly thereafter, you won't be readable at all. So keep that in mind. Number three, that radio that you bought, that little HT, can you program frequencies into that radio memory? Do you know how to do that? And uh, also, do you know how to program in the PL tones of the repeaters and what's called the offset uh, in frequency and plus or minus? So do you know how to do that? If you don't, you need to find out how to do that. Number four, can you make a usable VHF, UHF antenna, or uh, HF antenna out of simply a few pieces of wire. Can you do that? Uh, in an emergency, you know, may have to leave, leave very rapidly and you might need a better antenna. Do you know how to make one if you've got your hands on some wire, any kind of wire? Would you be able to construct an antenna out of that wire? Uh, many, many resources on the internet for how to do that. I'd encourage you to learn how to do that. <clears throat> and more specifically, you may, in your preps, want to write down the length of wire that you need for certain frequencies. You know, for instance, how long does a wire need to be to work 10 meters? How long does it need to be to work 20 meters? How long does it need to be to work uh, 80 meters? How long does it need to be to work 160 meters? You know, that would be good to have written down somewhere uh, that you can get your hands on it. Uh, maybe in your go bag, a little note, a uh, little note about the length of wire you'll need to make an antenna. That might be something good to have especially if you have a radio. <clears throat> what happens, number five would be, uh, what happens if you continue to transmit into an antenna that has a high SWR? There's two things that could happen. Um, one, your radio uh, may have a circuit in it that cuts back the power automatically if it sees a high SWR. Now, if you don't know what any of these terms are, again, uh, as I'm speaking, you might want to write them down and then Google them in a little bit once I quit talking and find out what they are. So if you have a high SWR, let's say something over uh, two to one, uh, something like that, over two to one, what, hap what would happen? 
And a couple of things would happen. Both of them are bad. One of them is uh, your radio, if it has the proper circuits in it, a lot of these little handy talkies do not have this circuit in it. A lot of the HF radios do. In other words, if it sees a high SWR, it's going to try to cut back on its power automatically uh, so that it protects itself from the uh, uh, watts, the power watts that are coming back into the radio. In other words, you're not 50 ohms, 50 ohms, which is what most radios want to see uh, coming from the antenna. That's one thing that can happen. Another thing that can happen, especially if it's a very high SWR, is uh, your transistors will start heating up in the radio and possibly burn out. That's why in the video I said, you know, the radio might not operate for more than a few hours and then it'll stop operating because you have burned it up by trying to transmit into an antenna that is not resonant. So that's some other things you need to consider in your preps is uh, what length the wire is resonant enough to get you a two to one or less uh, SWR. And can you make one of those just out of scrap pieces that you might find around? <clears throat> Number six. Can you operate portable? And again, that's, I'm using it the broadest sense possible. Uh, can you operate portable with that HT for an extended period of time? It's got a little old bitty battery in it. It's going to be gone if you transmit it all. And within one day, you're going to have to recharge it. How are you going to do that? How are you going to recharge that radio battery? You're going to have another one? Okay, well, you can operate two days. All right, what do you do after that? So the way you can uh, find all these things out is simply by operating portable. Uh, in my case, uh, I have a regular deep cycle battery uh, like you'd put on a trolling motor. And uh, I can operate uh, my HT off of there or my HF radio off of there for some period of time before I need to recharge that battery. And of course, I have some solar cells that I can use to recharge that battery. So these are some of the things you need to think about in your preps, because you'll probably be portable. And uh, how long can you operate portable before the batteries die? So that would be number six. Let me turn the page. I got 10 things for you today. Is actually what I have. Number seven, do you know what the term man pack, man pack, M-A-N-P-A-C-K, man pack means? <clears throat> if you've watched some old army movies, you know, the radio operator is always there. He's got a backpack. He's got a big antenna sticking out of it, and the radio is in the backpack. You can easily design one of these uh, with a backpack that you would buy. You can insert a small battery in there, have some kind of solar backup for it that you can carry around, a small solar cell that you could carry strapped to that backpack uh, for when the battery did die. And you have a battery in there with a mobile radio and a whip antenna, and you can just walk around with it. Uh, or you can designate somebody in your prep group to be the, quote, radio person and walk around with that man pack. So that interests you to be completely portable and moving around. You need to investigate man packs. You can buy them all ready to go, but I wouldn't suggest you do that. I'd suggest you just build one from scratch. They're not that hard. <clears throat> Number eight, did you pass the tech test, run out there and buy one of these little radios back here, these little handy talky HT radios, and then stick it in your go bag, and that was eight months ago? Well, it may not even turn on anymore. The battery may be dead. You've got to pull those things out at least once a month. 
plug them in, let them charge back up, keep them fully charged, uh, you know, test it, see if it's still working. Uh, might have lost all the, the frequencies you put in there. They may not be there anymore. So you need to know that before you're going to use it. So they got to be tested. So if you put it in the bag and uh, you're done now, you think you've got the communications problem licked, uh, you might want to reach in that bag and see what that radio is like today. Number nine. Do you know what frequencies that the EMS, the police, and the fire department, or any other emergency services in your area, do you know the frequencies they operate on? And have you programmed those frequencies already into your radio? Do you have them available? Can you monitor those frequencies? At least monitor them and so you got some idea of what's going on. Uh, a lot of the metroplexes have gone to uh, digital radios encrypted. Now, you're not going to be able to get into those. You're going to have to have one of those radios to monitor. But uh, many of the rural uh, EMS fire police are still analog. They're still analog here in Hunt County, so I can easily monitor all those frequencies and uh, whenever I hear a whole bunch of ambulances driving by or, or fire trucks or something I always go turn on the radio and see if I can find out what's going on and most of the time you can hear the uh, EMS people emergency services people uh, talking about what is happening that you're hearing uh, off in the distance so uh, Kind of a handy feature if you have a radio of any type is to be able to monitor those frequencies. Number 10, and probably the most important, you realize, of course, that my whole idea in that first video was to get you to practice your radio skills, just like you would practice any other prepper skills. You've got to practice it in order to be proficient at it. So I'd encourage you to, uh, you might want to join a club uh, at least for a year and kind of hang around some radio operators and kind of pick their brain. That would be one way to do it. Or you might want to attend field day, field day every day, every year. There's a couple of days where uh, hams go out in the field and operate portable. And that might be good for you to try to find out where a local one is having field day and just pop in. They don't mind you popping in. They'll let you use the equipment. And you can use the HF radios they have as long as they are in the room with you. That's perfectly all right. So you can even practice uh, on equipment you may not own or you may not have a license to operate. And then you can visually see how they set up all this equipment in order to uh, transmit and make contact. So uh, the summer field day is always the, the fourth full weekend in June. And this year, it's going to be June 23rd and 24th. It's usually over about noontime on Sunday. So you got to get there either on a Saturday or in the morning, early Sunday. A lot of clubs operate all night, Saturday night. So uh, you can get there in the afternoon on Saturday and kind of meet everybody and uh, play with the radios or ask questions or whatever. So uh, anyway, that's uh, the 10 and probably 11 things. There's probably 11 things there. That last one about field day was probably number 11. And that's all I wanted to accomplish in this video is to kind of get some of the preppers thinking about what they may have done six months ago that may not be 100% correct as far as uh, being able to communicate. Uh, 
uh, reliably. Uh, anyway, think about some of these questions. Uh, you can go back and review some of the terms in the video and then Google them up. I'll put a few links under the video just to kind of get you going a little bit. And as I usually do, I wish you clear skies in 73. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Y'all be good. Subscribe. More to come. See y'all later.